Apple cider vinegar is an amazing thing that you can add to your meals to improve digestion as well as lower the blood sugar response of your food. But apple cider vinegar has a very distinct taste and many people aren't able to handle it or there are some of the negative side effects in terms of tooth enamel decay and burning of your throat. But fortunately there are other alternatives that you can also use to get very similar benefits. So in this video we're going to talk about other alternatives to vinegar that can also help with your food intake. Do it. Usually vinegar is used as salad dressing and in many of these Mediterranean countries they use different kinds of vinegar on their salad and that helps with the cholesterol levels as well as the blood sugar levels from the meal. But these countries also use olive oil. Olive oil is easily considered one of the healthiest fats and oils in the world because of its high polyphenol content and ability to help with lipids. Extra virgin olive oil has been seen to reduce the postprandial glycemic response in response to a high glycemic meal. Olive oil increases postprandial GLP-1 secretion or glucagon-like peptide 1, which helps to reduce blood sugar levels. Olive oil also reduces glucose absorption and lowers cholesterol. Compared to sunflower oil, olive oil lowers fasting glucose and insulin and plasma cholesterol and LDL levels. The perfect combo would be to combine your vinegar with the olive oil for a nice salad dressing. But if you want to opt out of the vinegar and just use olive oil, then that's also perfectly fine. The second thing you can use instead of vinegar is cinnamon. Cinnamon can significantly reduce postprandial glucose by slowing gastric emptying. Consumption of cinnamon is associated with lower fasting plasma glucose, total cholesterol, LDLC, and triglycerides. Usually, cinnamon is used in desserts and it does taste pretty nicely, but because it's not actually like a sugar or anything, it's more of like a spice that gives it kind of a sweeter taste, then you can also use it on uh, main course meals. Now, this might sound strange, but I like actually like if I ever cook like bacon or some other meats, then I actually like to add the cinnamon when I'm cooking it on the pan. And uh, I mean, it tastes actually really nice. It tastes like candy almost, or it you know gives it this nice sweet spice uh, flavor. And uh, actually some of the polyphenols in cinnamon protect the fats in the meat or the bacon against lipid peroxidation and again against the formation of advanced glycation end products. So it's a perfect actually spice for cooking with and you can also use it on desserts to lower the blood sugar response. However, you have to be careful with consuming the right type of cinnamon. Cassia cinnamon is the one that has a lot of coumarin, which is actually associated with uh, liver toxicity. The healthiest cinnamon is Ceylon cinnamon. And if the package doesn't say that it's specifically saline cinnamon, then chances are it's cassia cinnamon that has a high amount of coumarin that is bad for the liver. Taking 3 to 6 grams of cinnamon for 40 days has been shown to lower pre-meal glucose levels in healthy adults. Giving 5 grams of cinnamon immediately before an oral glucose tolerance test or 12 hours before it has been shown to lower glucose area under the curve in response to the glucose test by 13% and 10% respectively compared to placebo. Ingesting 3 grams of cinnamon every day for 2 weeks has been shown to reduce the glucose response to an oral glucose tolerance test on day 1 as well as on the 14th day and improve insulin sensitivity in healthy adults. So both the immediate and the long-term cinnamon intake is very beneficial for your uh, blood sugar levels. Can I have that Milky Way? Next up, we'll talk about protein, the specific macronutrient that also is very important for managing your postprandial glucose levels. Leaner proteins like fish, chicken, steak, and pork reduce glucose excursions and improve insulin sensitivity. A high protein meal at breakfast has been shown to reduce the glucose response to lunch. Protein also has the highest thermic effect of food, which means that you burn more calories digesting protein, which helps to create a calorie deficit much more easily. So whenever you are eating a meal, start with protein and fibrous foods first, because it's going to lower the blood sugar response of the carbohydrates you eat after that. Another thing that you can use is tea. Tea, even at small doses, can lower postprandial glucose in healthy individuals. The effect is probably due to the high polyphenol content of tea. Habitual tea consumption is linked to a lower risk of diabetes. Now there's dozens of teas out there, the healthiest ones generally are these. Green tea consumption has been found to reduce the risk of diabetes thanks to its high antioxidant and polyphenol content. In diabetic rats, green tea lowers high blood sugar levels by activating muscle GLUT4. In Japan, people who drink 6 cups of green tea a day have been found to have a 33% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes compared to drinking 1 cup a week. EGCG, the main catechin in green tea, inhibits fat cell proliferation, increases antioxidant defense, and blocks lipid formation. 
There appears to be an inverse relationship between habitual tea consumption and body fat percentage and body fat distribution. Black tea also lowers postprandial glucose levels in both normal and pre-diabetic individuals. Chamomile tea is a common herbal tea that has many health benefits, but it can also lower blood sugar levels. In an 8-week study, drinking 5 ounces of tea made with 3 grams of chamomile 3 times a day after every meal resulted in significant reductions in hemoglobin A1c and insulin levels compared to the control group. Tea. Next up is turmeric. Turmeric and its main bioactive compound curcumin can reduce blood sugar and lipid levels. Curcumin has glucose lowering and insulin sensitizing effects. Supplementing curcumin for 9 months lowers the number of pre-diabetic individuals developing full diabetes. Ingesting 750 milligrams of a turmeric extract twice a day for 6 months in type 2 diabetic patients significantly reduced total body fat, visceral fat, waist circumference, triglycerides and insulin resistance. Last food on the list is garlic. Historically, garlic has been recommended for managing high cholesterol and triglycerides. But garlic also has benefits on diabetes as it can lower blood glucose levels in addition to cholesterol and triglycerides. Garlic has been seen to improve insulin sensitivity and metabolic syndrome in fructose-fed rats. Most of the therapeutic effects of garlic are mediated by allicin, which is the main bioactive compound in garlic. To activate allicin, you need to crush the garlic and let it sit for a while. Heating, pickling or boiling garlic significantly reduces allicin content. So if I were to produce like a very nice meal for lowering blood sugar levels, if I didn't have to use vinegar, then I would take olive oil, I would take some fibrous uh, vegetables and salad, I would also add some garlic there, maybe sprinkle some cinnamon, other herbs and spices, maybe turmeric as well in there, mix it all up, has a nice you know taste to it. And I would also eat that with a little bit of protein to lower the blood sugar levels even further. But this is for, yeah, if you don't want to use vinegar or you can't use it. If you're perfectly fine with vinegar like I am, then uh, yeah, make sure you check out my other video about the benefits of vinegar and how much to take. But if you do want to slow down aging, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.